Oh, I'm so glad everybody's here. Welcome to the 2020 Educators in VR International Summit. Wow, we are on day five, five days of this. This is amazing. We have um, just a little over 24 hours left, and we have brought together some of the best, the most amazing people from this diverse, diverse industry in virtual reality. Um, and we have, we have people covering every single topic that is possible. And this is a groundbreaking, record-breaking event where it is completely virtual. Though Dana Maria over here, who's coughing, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's recovering from a cold. She, um, she did one of the few live in-person events that are also was also done here in Altspace. So kudos on that yesterday. That was that yesterday. I Thank lost you. track. <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. And I want to remind everyone, because we're doing this virtual, what we're doing is this viral thing that we want you to take a picture of what your experience is in the real world attending this conference. So get that picture of your VR setup of you laying in bed in your jammies, whatever it is with the laptop and the headphones and the headset on top of you, whatever it looks like, trying to do that thing. And please put it out on social media with hashtag Summit Selfie. Or is it Selfie? Summit Selfie. Yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> And we're going to put together a huge collage of all the pictures to show that off. It's just going to be amazing. So make sure you get those pictures in. Also know that we now have all the news that is out. I'll be announcing it on our website, but we have already started putting it out to social media about our event tomorrow, Insomnian Space. We're going to be breaking, trying to break yeah. the world record. Yeah, I have over 400, <laughs> I think it's 62 people. We're going to be rocking it completely with um, doing, you know, getting as many many bodies as possible, virtual bodies as possible in the same virtual space. So check it out for Somnium Space tomorrow. And unfortunately, mobile users could not access Somnium Space right now. They just couldn't get it done. So it is for PC, so get it downloaded and installed um, on your computer and ready to go or use your PC um, HMD device. So we're going to love that. All right, so uh, Dana, did you want to introduce Esther and then I yeah. just take over and you get things done? All right, it's all yours. Yes, yeah, yeah. So thank you, everybody who's here. We're going to sit. Oh, it's already past. Thank you so for being here. I hope there's some new people also as well. I see I don't recognize everybody, so there's some new people here. Very nice. Uh, Esther Semayo is a colleague of mine. I know her very well. Uh, we've been starting this journey like at the same time so i'm really happy that she's here uh, esther started social vr in 2015 and uh, a social vr developed social and behavior programs example of programs in vr is complex diverse to put children in the center of attention and she's working with biofeedback and with children with autism and their research had found an uncommon result in their state of self-control, changing hearts and minds regarding the impact of the eye on autism. And she will share her findings and, and research in this fascinating presentation. So give Esther Tsemayo a big hand and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to uh, present uh, something about uh, one of our first uh, projects with um, youngsters with autism. Um, I was already introduced in social VR also, so I will just start the session. Social VR is all about uh, uh, creating awareness uh, but also activating new behavior. And there's always a part that's uh, uh, amusing, like uh, we always put a lot of fun and amusement into it. So I'm going to tell you something about this. Um, it was actually the end of 2014, beginning, beginning of 2015, that uh, we uh, started a project where we went into a school with uh, youngsters that were mostly uh, autistic. They, um, uh, the, the project that we, we started up was uh, we wanted to 
involve the children in telling their stories to create different scenarios because autism is such a broad, uh, has so many aspects and everybody that has autism is in a different spectrum. So it's not, uh, not said that if you recognize autism in one person that you also will recognize it in another person. So it's really different, but it's also really similar. Uh, so to try and find the like the the uh, the, the most in common uh, elements of uh, autism, we wanted to start with asking all these children to tell them tell their stories, their scenarios that we could put into VR. Uh, we went into their canteen and in 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 one uh, one day we we got forty. Uh, children that wanted to work with us and started to tell their stories. So we didn't really approach autism uh, from a scientific point of view, but really from a human point of view and from their point of view. And um, the, the, the project I'm going to tell you something about is not really um, uh, this specific pro project. But it's a project that started up because they, uh, because we we our our method really works from their point of view. Um, okay, I'm really I'm sorry. Everybody's walking in, and I have to tell something about myself. I didn't do this before, and I'm really maybe you saw so many presentations, but I really have to get used to. <laughs> Moving my head a bit and looking at you guys. So thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> okay, I'm getting into my story again. What I want to tell you is, uh, yeah, that also works. Come a little bit closer, you people. Come on, I'm a person, people. So I also love avatars. <laughs> um, yes. The thing that we were, we were doing was uh, uh, we were in the school and simultaneously in the school there was one group of, of youngsters, like eight kids with autism in one class and they were like the, the, the most impossible class to handle. So everybody of the school uh, was busy with this one class. And we were simultaneously uh, uh, preparing for a project where we um, help children focus, especially children with uh, specific uh, needs, uh, with, with VR. So then they asked us, um, maybe you can help us with this specific class. And here you can, uh, you can see these guys, they're having a music lesson. Um, and uh, if, if you, I, I don't know if you remember when you were at school, some of these children, they just, if you point at one, then uh, the other one points at the other and then somebody starts hitting or like uh, uh, juggling each other and you know they're really busy and out of out of control so they became out of control all the time and um, so that's where we started all right so esther i'd yeah. like to, to a quick yeah. check in how many people can see can see the slides please give me some hearts okay okay so let me reset the okay. space hang on a second let me get the yes. link here i'm going to sorry about this i hate to interrupt this but we want to make sure people see your slides so let me try one thing yeah, first sure. and then let's see if people see them all right, now do you see the slides, everybody? Yay! Rock on. Beautiful. I see, I see a Frederick here, maybe not? No, if you, now everybody's saying they can't see the slides. So if you cannot see them, I, okay. please re-enter oh, the space. Sorry yeah. about that. Thank you. No, it's okay. 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 Uh, so what we did was create awareness. We put them in uh, for uh, eight weeks. Every uh, every week we put them into the VR, uh, and they saw this uh, VR film where they got triggered. 
they got triggered because uh, there was this uh, guy next to, sitting next to them and uh, tapping, tapping with a pen on the, uh, on the side. And then a little bit later in the film, there are uh, some other children trying to make a, a picture. And uh, the teacher is get, getting more angry and angry, but also is um, doing a geography lesson. And he's really sending a lot of information to the class all the time. And there are a lot of children in the class, and you're in this class. And there are happen happening so many things simultaneously in the VR film that we showed them that every child on itself was really uh, triggered by one of the things. So one of the, the kids said, OK, uh, I, I got really agitated by, by the, the ticking of the pen. And then one of the questions was, what do you do when you get agitated by clicking the ticking of the pen? I would hit, uh, hit the pen or try and get the pen and throw it into the glass and then, well, you can imagine, if you do this in real, then the whole class would be like one big uh, fire again, everybody fighting. And uh, the other one says, yeah, it, at the end, the teacher says to me that uh, I should be silent and I, I uh, should do my best. And, but I didn't do anything. So they're really uh, uh, upset because they, they were uh, wrongly accused. And there, were, there are so many triggers in this film that every kid that, that went into the VR film was triggered somewhere and they explained to us, which was really a nice uh, uh, finding, they explained to us that um, this is the classroom they saw. Uh, they, they explained to us that, that they would have um, done a lot of things to to disrupt to disrupt the classroom and to be like busy doing stuff that they didn't didn't uh, uh, really want to do. But then when I we asked them why didn't you do it while you were feeling such a, a heavy emotions and you really wanted to do it why didn't you do it while you were uh, watching this film in VR? And then they said, yeah, but, you know, I know you're sitting next to me and uh, I have this, uh, these things on my head and, you know, I, uh, it, really, it, it would really look weird if, if I would really uh, start hitting around me, f f trying to find a pen or shouting to the teacher. And so we did this like eight times in two months. And then after one or two times, they realized that they were really agitated about something they really wanted to act up but they didn't and then if when they were in their classroom they started to realize what the um the uh, the feeling of not not acting to the emotion they felt what it what it what it uh, uh, what kind of um, state of mind this this was so they really felt their state of mind of self-control and the nice thing was that what we did this repeatedly of course uh, that they really started to recognize this state of mind of self-control and then after a while they started to self-control themselves in the classroom as well and these children they have autism and they have had autism for a long time. So they have gone to psychiatrists, to psychologists, to uh, all these behavioral uh, uh, therapists and, and uh, experts. They are always asking them to, how do you feel? What, what, uh, uh, why do you do this? Why do you do that? So they are always uh, be, being asked about their, their behavior. They didn't want to talk about their behavior anymore. And they really had fun by doing the VR because after the, the, the session, we, they could also like drive a car and do the fun stuff. And they really were excited every week to come in. And then their self-control uh, uh, was uh, improving, but also their um, wanting to talk about it became more easy because they, they understood what they 
needed to talk about. So also the mentors and psychologists that were surrounding this, this class, these, these children, were really uh, amazed about um, how it became possible again to uh, get in contact with the kids and, and talk about, uh, about the future actually. There was one kid that was coming in the second time and he said, yeah, but I don't want to do this because I want to have like this degree uh, at the end of the high school because I want to do these studies and my behavior is, is not like, you know, it's not like I do the things that I don't get the results with my, my behavior. So it was really nice that, that we could see like on different levels that things uh, changed. The, the nice thing was that it was like we, we uh, uh, this, this is really the, the self-control um, uh, like uh, um, uh, the self-control aspect and um, results uh, were amazing but the, the fun thing was that we started this project not really uh, to improve the self-control. This was just something that came up and was really the strongest thing that came out because we really were uh, watching and uh, um, we were really uh, uh, in, uh, getting into the uh, materials that were already there, like the scientific materials about uh, virtual reality exposure therapy in post-traumatic stress syndrome and also in the uh, anxiety uh, corner where since the 80s you had a lot of uh, scientific uh, um, material to study where you start from. So what we, what we initially were doing was trying to see if we could get uh, some focus into, uh, into their behavior and uh, to see if there were things that they were kind of scared of whereas they started to act up. Uh, but the fun thing was that this self-control mechanism was so strong in the, uh, um, uh, during the sessions, it, it, uh, it improved so, so strongly that, uh, that it was really nice to see that just asking the questions what would you have done in real uh, and why didn't you do it in the VR uh, really were the key questions to uh, get to this awareness but also to the activation into the real class. So this was one of the parts that uh, uh, we, um, uh, we discovered. And something we also used, and I think that it was really, um, how do you say that? Uh, it was really uh, uh, amazing also. <laughs> Every time I push a button, I cannot talk anymore. Oh, I need to do this more often. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, let me see. What we also did, you can see now a slide uh, where uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, developed a kit in VR where within the VR glasses we, we put the neurofeedback so it's one uh, it's the same set and uh, we created a setting where you can uh, real-time uh, see your focus and relaxation during the VR film that you're watching and this also made them, we, with these kids we work with focus, but sometimes we work with relaxation. It kind of depends on what kind of program we do. Uh, but if, you, if we, we work with focus, the, the nice thing is that because we worked with um, a group of boys that also knew each other, they also had like social interaction about it uh, in between. So they knew it had to do something with focus. And the teacher was uh, uh, doing the geography lesson. So at the end of the VR film, they uh, got some cognitive questions also. And you could also see that uh, in a couple of weeks, their focus starts to improve. And it's really nice because we, we also did some, some other research. And then we saw that if you give them the real-time um, the real-time uh, neurofeedback, that it works a lot 
better than um, uh, than if you if you talk about it afterwards or uh, uh, in advance. So uh, this is a little bit. And, and the, the the nice thing is also that after after that you can have some graphs uh, and you can compare your uh, your material. So you really have nice uh, research. So this was the activation. Um, I think I will. I, I, I'm only going to tell you something about uh, uh, a couple of other projects that we did. Um, like this is a project where we uh, we we work with parents to put their children more into the center line of their attention and communication in complex divorces. Uh, so this is a, a real example that this is your point of view as a kid and your father just got in and your mother just got in oh your mother was looking for your for your doll and then you really uh, as parents you get aware of what it means to be like here whereas the the stress is is going r around you and what we always not always but what we mostly do is work with uh, trigger films uh, to trigger the emotions but we also work with good practice films to, uh, because I think uh, to, to, to try and find what you desire is uh, as strong, maybe even stronger than uh, uh, to work with uh, things that trigger you. And then the last slide, um, almost last slide here. Uh, and we did something similar for school dropouts. Uh, and here we work with uh, uh, family systems. So uh, uh, we work with the youngster and the parents as well in the VR, but all the films are made through the eyes of the youngster. And then uh, we really work with uh, sy systemic uh, uh, family work uh, with the VR. So a lot of amusement with the elderly people, for example. And uh, we had a lot of, yeah, we had a lot of, we also work with elderly people. I would like to thank you all for this. It, it's really uh, been a nice experience for me to do this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, give it up for and her. This is beautiful. If you have some... Oh, fantastic. <laughs> the courage that you're bringing to this is really amazing. Esther. Thank you so much. All right, let's open the floor for some mm -hmm. questions. Oh, are you going to do the questions, Dana Maria? Yes, yeah, sorry. All I right, all yours. Out. Hey, okay. thank you, Esther. So, so great that you're doing this. And don't worry, we had a lot of speakers who had to... Um, adjust you know so it's for everybody yeah. to you we are all pioneering yeah. so you're uh, just pioneering <laughs> and next year you come again and and you would be even better than you are now so i, I you have a lot of people here <laughs> Thank so you probably <laughs> welcome is there anybody uh, who has a question please raise your hand uh no i see uh, uh why you're not you are not smiling don't you have the hands Sirian, is there no hands for you? Uh, what's going on there? Oh, okay, good smiling now. Okay, anybody else? Can you raise your hands if you have a question? There are about two people. This? No, ah. they have to use the oh, raise yes. hand button. You got that? Ben, Ben, uh, <coughs> Ben Allen probably is raising his hand. Is it right? Yes. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. No, we cannot no. hear you. So hold on a uh, second. Well, um, That's I gave not it to how Carlos. it works. I gave Hang it to on Carlos. a second. Hold on, one person controlling questions. Carlos, go for it. Hi, Carlos. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, 
Uh, I think there there is. Uh, uh, I don't have it here, but there is one um, experience that tries to uh, show a little bit about what it what what it means to uh, be in an artistic be in an artistic spectrum and. Uh, but there is not actually there is not a lot right now. Uh, what we work with, we also work with uh, with children, for example, with HDHD. But this and we we um, uh, the autistic uh, like the 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 research is more on autism than the uh, uh, the method. And this method is really uh, for professionals. Um, so, but but to 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 there are some uh, VR experiences that show a little bit about how it is to have have autism that you can you know you can help them with. So if they recognize themselves in it, then they can use it to maybe show it to other people, and then it's easier to to have a discussion about it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right. Next up mm -hmm. is Zeke. Zeke, where's Zeke? Okay. There we go. Thank you. My question is. Um, how can um i had to um but basically in all the disability programs how does social vr um how do you fix the problems with people with autism on that front like it does social vr improve um fix some of the problems that regular programs don't Um, if, if we, we are kind of specific in what we do, uh, what, uh, so it kind of depends on what, what, are you talking about specific problems now or specific, uh, things? Mm. It's just because I've been in, um, certain disability programs before, yeah. but I just kind of noticed there's a disconnect between the disability or autism person and the uh, leaders of the group and would social VR help with that aspect? Yeah. The leaders of the group. Uh, I, I, I don't really understand because what we, what we do is uh, work on social, like uh, if, 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 uh, in social interaction, because there's a lot of there, with autism, you see a lot of uh, uh, social interaction problems, and this is something we really help with. But also to recognize uh, to recognize stuff like uh, the recognition of the state of of self control, uh, but also uh, the re this is also a recognition of um, where you're at emotionally. So if you really get triggered about something, uh, that there are a lot of steps in between, and these are the things we really work with. So um, the the steps before you need to self control is of course that you you feel something and you want to do something, and sometimes the time in between is is really short. So what we do with VR, what the VR specific is here, is that we. Uh, Enlarge the amount of time in between the moment that you that you are triggered and feel like a really heavy emotion, and the moment in time that you act on it. And personally, I think uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, yeah, this is really specific for autism." But I think most of us, um, like for a, a, a certain percentage a day don't act in a way that we get the result that we want to get with the way we act. So it's really the awareness of, of 
knowing you you get like uh, a thought or an emotion or something comes up into your head or in your, into your body or, or into your emotional system and then you act and a lot of people act very fast and what we do in VR mainly is to try and get some space in between and this mm. space in between creates this state of mind, this state of mind of self-control, is this state of mind of choosing, of choosing, are you going to do what you want to do or are you going to do what your emotional body or what your, uh, what your mind says, your, you know, what, what your direct mind or your, your, uh, um, uh, your emotions yeah. say. <laughs> So you can, most people really react because they think, oh, this is the way, but, but uh, most of the time you don't get the result that you want. And this is like, this is the basics of when do you feel you had good communication and when didn't you? A lot of things are, are, are uh, it's possible to bring it back to this, this state of mind in between, this, this space in between where you decide what you do because you know what you want as a result. So I think this is a little bit where we, this is the space we work with. And that we yeah, and this is where social by VR using the VR. Is, yeah. And this is what social yeah. VR <laughs> is um, helping for. That's what you want to, uh, that's what yeah. he's asking. Well, does social VR help in that way that they uh, improve the lives of people with autism, for example? Yeah, wonderful. We have a question from Elvis. Elvis is in the building. There you go. <laughs> Elvis? Wait, I had a question. Elvis? Well, you hit the raise hand button. Oh, that's ah, yes, there you are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, Elvis. Yay. Steph, you're next. Hi. Uh, what you just described, can you hear me? Yes. Can you? Yes, 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 definitely. I, I'm looking for you, but. Uh, right here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you. Yeah, okay. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, <laughs> what you just described is very much like um, I was born with some learning disabilities, one of which um, makes it a little hard for me sometimes to find words. And I have found mm. as I've gotten older, maybe my brain has gotten a little slower, uh, introducing a moment where I try not to think of the word I'm trying to get brings me mm -hmm. the word I wanted. And that's very much yeah. like what you're describing yeah. uh, with, with VR. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. really interesting For to sure. me. Uh, but that wasn't my yeah. original question. <laughs> Can I ask another <laughs> yeah, question? It's nice to hear. Really nice to hear. Yeah, sure. Uh, my mother just turned 100 years old. And last year we were wow. both enjoying VR. But as she's gotten some dementia, <laughs> um, she can't yeah. negotiate between having uh, an outside and an inside, being in two places at once. You'd rather know where she is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you encountered that? Is, is there any way I can kind of get around that for her Do you, uh, that you know of? Um, well, I did work with uh, people with dementia. Um, to, to be honest, it's, it's really personal. Mm. Uh, because um, some some of the people I worked with were really uh, uh, they they could really handle very well the VR and um, they well, my mother really did for quite um, a while yeah yeah and and then um, they uh, uh, but if you say that she wants to be in one spot at a time what do you what do you mean? Uh, it confuses her that, that she knows that she's she stopped being able to uh, know that she was in two places at once, you know, in VR and also sitting there in a chair at home. Um, and that yeah. increasingly got irritating for her and she stopped enjoying it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't encounter, encounter this specifically, uh, mm. to be honest. Um... Uh, what, what I what I did encounter was that as long as the VR was in a really a good space for the um, for the person that w went into it and it really reminded them of uh, their childhood or their younger years that uh, that they they came out very um, 
softly. And uh, even some, some, uh, in some cases, they started uh, to have uh, better night rest and like really easier, uh, easier life. Because sometimes it's, uh, yeah, sometimes there. The nights will, will, will also get uh, really rough uh, when, when you get dementia. So, uh, and yeah. All right. It's, uh, it, it also helps in this case. Great question. Lana has a question. Oops. Lana? Do you have a question? Hello. <laughs> uh, yes, I Where's spoke Lana? with Dana. Can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I've spoke with Dana just a little bit about this, but I wanted to ask you, is there a certain age uh, that you can start this type of treatment with in VR? Yeah, well, uh, most of the devices give, give you give you 13 I, I think uh, my experience is that uh, it, it can like there are two different things you have like uh, the advice that the uh, software hardware companies give and this is the age of 13 uh, but I also work with younger younger children and uh, the effect on younger children is as much as for uh, older children and also elderly people or uh, mid-aged people. So the, the effect is the same and similar in impact. All yes, right. and can I add, can I add something ahead. to that? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Skip Rizzo, we both know Skip Rizzo, as than me, <laughs> he is saying mm -hmm. that 13 years is really um, uh, yeah, some disclaimer for the companies who are producing, but really if you are a therapist or coach, you can easily work with uh, kids younger than that. It's, it's uh, very uh, yeah. helpful. They like also this, this uh, media to be uh, coached with, you know, that's more exciting yeah. to them. So, and it's not, no problem to start and, younger. And just to add and to that. Rest of yeah, the third, Sorry. the thirteen year, the thirteen years old is something for public access, not for private home or otherwise use therapy. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Ron yeah. and, is and, up. Uh, Sorry, oh. uh, just to add, Skip Rizzo is one of the well-known uh, therapists who works already 20 years with therapy and virtual reality. So he's well-known and knows what he's talking about. So we can really, uh, yeah, accept his advice on that. That's what I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ron? Uh, Esther? Yeah. Esther? Mm -hmm. yeah. Over here? Yeah. Uh, I had a question about the, the videos mm -hmm. that uh, you showed yeah. uh, to parents and uh, children who drop out of school and so on. Do you use actors for that mm -hmm. or do you use actual uh, patients and subjects? Well, it's. Um... Uh, it, it, it differs because sometimes it's really useful to work with the people that uh, are also in the program but uh, I always stage uh, something that has a certain scenario because uh, uh, it's always really important that uh, the scenario is um, recognizable for the people that, uh, that are going to use it and there are really specific triggers where you can work with. So, uh, for example, I worked uh, with, in special education, I worked with the youngsters from the school uh, to create a program where we train as well teachers as the youngsters themselves um, in, uh, in behavioral uh, aspects. And um, it's, it was really nice because these youngsters, yeah, they are, it's not for nothing that they are in special education but they were amazing actors and it was really nice to work with them because we, we kind of did this like 10 times in a row and then we had exactly the right one and it's the same thing as when you work with actors actually, even actors um, maybe even better <laughs> and then because they uh, because this day, two days we worked with these youngsters they also started to realize uh, already what their behavior meant to the teacher and what it means to the other students. So while creating, we were also busy uh, um, in training them in behavioral aspects. So yeah, it, it's a nice combination to do both, 
but in the uh, like with with the um, complex divorces, for example, we really worked with uh, actors. And the the camera is the kid, so the kid's not there. But then we do use uh, the 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 children um, that are really in the situation, uh, like the the, the uh, dropouts. I use the dropouts uh, for the um, voiceover uh, at the beginning, so you know who the one that's in the camera, who you are at that moment in time, and we we use like the dropouts uh, uh, in this, and we pay them for the voiceover. So yeah. And did you find that, that using the dropouts as to enact these scenarios, did that actually help the dropouts yeah. as well? Uh, yes, doing very that? much. Yes, very much. Yes, definitely. That's 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 yeah. That's also the reason that we do it because we think uh, this interaction in real time, and then we go to a professional studio to the voiceover. So they really, you know, they're really part of the team. Uh, they they come in for lunch and so yeah they're really part of everything then yeah so it helps them in different aspects all right wonderful yeah. great great we have Zeke with a question and anyone else who is we just yeah. a few minutes left here if you'd like to ask a question make sure you hit that <laughs> raise hand button so <laughs> I was wanting to know about autism on TV and mm. a lot of people it it yeah. kind of, the way it's presented, seems like mm -hmm. it's a disease, in a sense, and uh, that you're trying to find no, a cure. Um, no. So, but I'm saying the person, is there another mm -hmm. way you can present autism where it doesn't sound like it's a disease for a cure or something of that nature? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I really love your question and uh, I'm, I'm kind of touched by uh, what you say because it's the opposite of uh, what, what I'm trying to do. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't really believe in um, putting these uh, uh, stickers on people. Uh, so the way we work is, is to try and uh, um, put it more broadly, like so. That's that's why this this is a method, and it works. And the example is because these kids in, uh, that I talk about in this specific project were were eight kids with with autism. Um, so uh, actually, I don't know. Can I can I uh, can I get some advice from you of how to how to do this, because mm. I would really like to to listen. Uh, I don't know. Um, the only thing I could come up with is that autism is just a different function of the brain, basically. It's not mm. like a disease, yeah. it's just a different way of thinking rather than yeah. um, supposed to be a cure to make that person more pure yeah. in a sense at least that's yeah. from what i've gathered um from ads and just the way it's presented by a lot of people yeah and if i could yeah. if i could add one more thing before we get to the um next question here that's a great topic a great a whole area of discussion zeke um what i yeah. what i know from working um quite intimately with a lot of people um who are get put in these boxes and these labels they want to be the new norm, so please treat them like they are just normal. And they and you know we just yeah. learn to accept and, and be tolerant. I think that's the best answer for all yeah. of that, because it's just so important. Yeah, I love it. All right, so next up is yeah. can I can oh, I say just sir. can I say just mm -hmm. one 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 of thing course. about this because uh, the 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 reason that we we started at this school with the other project that I started uh, with. Um, to try and find scenarios, different scenarios from all these different children, because there were there were children uh, in the spectrum of autism, but they were so different, and I thought this was really amazing because um, 
uh, that this is something that we really wanted to do. We wanted to see if we could uh, create like this uh, a virtual reality app where you um, can choose a personality and this and all the personalities do or don't have autism but you can really find uh, some th similarities but more in the way you feel about it but by putting the the films in from the perspective of the the, the children with autism, you can really see how they enjoy the world and how they see the world and what their capacities are and how their where their strengths lay and you know so um, just uh, uh, to create this app where you can you can like uh, cross over from one person to the other and then you can really feel like autism is not just that's why that's why I don't like to say you you are an artist but yeah you, you're somewhere in the spectrum and it's also different it's as different as everybody so and that's that's exactly what we wanted to create uh this app for to to show the world that if you look to it from the inside it's really diverse and not to be labeled really special actually i love it that's beautiful everybody applause for that one and then we'll take a couple a few more questions we get need to get ready for the next event oh that's i love it i love it fantastic mm -hmm. thank you all right so ben you're up hi there everybody uh this whole conference has been wonderful so really pleased to be participating in it um so last week i was at a talk at mit media lab for a a uh, ARIA, AR in Action, and uh, there was a really great talk by Dr. Carolyn Robertson at Dartmouth, and you can look her talk up on YouTube. It's called VR Insights into the Visual Brain, and uh, she gave me her card, and it's uh, DartmouthAutismResearch.com, and so I found her talk really interesting, and my question is, is there a resource of practitioners, uh, a list of different uh, people doing different type of research into this and different programs that are available? Uh, is there somebody coordinating some sort of international research initiative around this subject? Um, and you, you, uh, you mean the subject around behavioral VR or around... Around uh, autism, uh, using uh, VR autism as a tool to reach uh, autistic people. People on the autism no, spectrum. No, not yet. I I, I did uh, approach the uh, the the the, uh, the uh, organization of autism in in the Netherlands, for example, uh, to see if we if we could do something uh, with VR and then uh, create some uh, international uh, platform for this. But uh, they they were not ready yet. <laughs> So maybe it's a, it's nice that you ask a question now uh, because there's also a European organization. Um, but I think uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see if if uh, if we can organize something like this. Yes, but it, as far as I know of, uh, it's it's not there yet because uh, I, I think because uh, this developed uh, so much in just a couple of years. And uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, um, everybody was really a little bit uh, uh, cautious uh, with VR, and now now you have so many possibilities. So it's probably now now it's time. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. All right, Keith. We're oops. He's he came out. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, and and for being here. And mm -hmm. uh, Dana, take us out. Yes. So thank you so much, Esther, Simayo, and everybody else who've been here to watch and ask so many good questions. So that was really amazing, Esther. We don't have so many questions a lot, so you did very well. Okay. Everybody wanted to know more. Nice. So you have to come back definitely next time again and give a big mm -hmm. hand. And if anybody wants to talk to Esther, come and follow us, Esther and me, and then you can mm -hmm. have some interaction and talk uh like one and one and in a small group uh, and just um go on with the conversation so please join us and come yeah and so head into the, the social group. space 
and we'll get yes. set up for the next event. So just follow right out that exit sign. And okay, right Donna, there by guys. the globe. Thank you very much. <laughs> and oops, hey Donna, and right over here. Here's the telephone.